On this latest episode, we're going to not only review Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor since it's Thursday. We all know what took place on those two date on those two shows. As you know, Impact are in fact building up all the way to Under Siege, and of course, in Impact, I mean, in ROH, a lot of things took place. We got the television title and the women's title on the line, and more things took place. As one of them, I know, has been revolving about Stu Grayson and plenty others. But first things first, we're going to be reviewing Wrestling Revolver Mayhem for All. This is one of the much recent events by Wrestling Revolver. As, of course, the Revolver title on the line, the remix title, the tag titles, and plenty other things. And, of course, a dream death match. Then, of course, we cap it up with some news updates to tell what events are happening, what promotions are posting out, who's booked, any wrestlers that have been injured, and what not has been, of course, announced. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead at Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Gerard here. So let's begin with Wrestling Revolver Mayhem for All. Now, normally when we see a championship match, especially if it's the top title, the world title, that's always the main event, but for some odd reason, it was the opener. So our current uh, Revolver champion, also known as our current Impact Wrestling champion, Steve Macklins defends the Revolver championship against Speedball Mike Bailey. Now, you know this type of match is going to be one hell of a match, especially the time we have seen Mike Bailey, one of the present wrestler he's been not to mention he acted like he needs to make up for the five years that he missed out out here in the states but unfortunately he came up short when macklin applied to kia and he retained the title now i did mention this before on a news update roderick strong has been announced that he will be making his wrestling revolver debut very soon so we'll get to that more and more until the net on to the next show that will take place in July, but I forgot what's the next one taking place next month. Now, um, our next match is a somewhat of a three-minute match. Uh, Marina Shafir decided to give uh, whoever it is a big load of cash. I forgot what kind. And the person who responded, it's none other than Henry Monroe. But this match ended just like that under maybe a minute or so by submission, of uh, course. Marina Shafir doesn't have to pay anybody. Now, our next match we have is the unit consistent of Ali Catch and JT Dunn, along with Phil Stumper, that little weasel. Or should I say the fat-ass weasel? He in They face against Jessica and, of course, the Monster Hunter, Matthew Palmer. Now, we know that JT Dunn dealt with the Monster Hunter before, and Ali Catch dealt with Jessica. However, this match was pretty interesting. Uh, it was really fun, but however, as always, we see the unit try to find ways to cut their way through to pick up a win. And of course, they pinned Jessica, and that pretty much ended right there. Now, our remix title match is taking place. We have, of course, uh, our current WXW World Champion, Chigahiro Iri, taking on, of course, um, Alex Shelley. Now, Shelley has pissed off a lot of people, not to mention going out telling everyone he represents prestige wrestling, which is not something you say on a Wrestling Revolver show. However, he decides, you know, to go out of his way to piss off Shigeri that he, these need to, that he doesn't know what he says. But apparently we do know what he did say to him. F you. So basically, we all know what that means. And the match 
pretty much went well until the referee was knocked out thanks to courtesy of Alex Shelley. He low blowed Erie and then of course Erie blow blowed him. But the match seemed like it was in favor of Erie, but somehow Alex Shelley got this match to be re reversed and retained the title. But we all know the real winner of that match is none other than Shika Iro Erie. Now, as soon as this match was over, we see these couple of frat boys show up. I don't know their names, but I do know they call themselves the Alpha Sigma Sigma. They decide to disrespect Iowa for no apparent reason. However, Man Scout, who is a resident of Iowa, is not just going to stand by and let these punks try to disrespect the state that he loves so much. However, he brought a couple of boys that would back him up, and that is, of course, these type of boys are not afraid to a fight, and that is Second Girl Crew, one called Manders, and the Southern Psycho, um, Man Swarner. And they gave Alpha Sigma Sigma an ass beating of a lifetime. They were throwing them through tables, chairs, the doors, the whole enchilada. I'm sure they're going to be sore in the morning. They're going to look more like they're not going to, they've been parting too much. But at least they got the message. Now, our next match. It's a lucha death match between Rocky Romero and Lince Dora. However, this is payback for what Rocky Romero did to Lince Dorada last time. Now, if you guys remember, Rocky Romero ripped, uh, removed um, Lince Dorada's mask by allowing himself to win. However, if you guys remember this one fairly well, Yushin Thunder Liger did have an alter ego called himself Kishin Liger, which is a demon like. God type of persona. Well, apparently, Cinderella also has his own alter ego, calls himself Lince Violenza. So basically, he's a much violent cat, and apparently, he was throwing everything at him. And fortunately, Lince Dorada taught this Rock Romero a lesson when he applied the 450, the shooting star press, allowing himself to pick up the W, and that was it. Now, our next match, we have a four way match featuring Crash Jackson. El Phantasmo, Rich Swan, and somehow this guy got involved, Damian Chambers. Now, this was a very interesting one because I think I can see a match could, could happen between Swan and Phantasmo. Now, the entirety of the match, you can tell Damian Chambers is so desperate to pick up his first win in Wrestling Revolver. But, however, he came up short when he got the 450 splash by Rich Swan. But right in the post-match, Swan told El Fantasmo, you and I need to have a one-on-one -on -one match. And I'm sure everybody says, I'm, I'm sure we tell Wrestling Revolver, please make it happen. So we'll see what happens until then. Now, the Wrestling Revolver tag team tout were on the line in a three in a trios match. The Rascals defend those titles along with Defend those titles against Bullet Club with ABC, which were the, of course, the previous champions. And, of course, they are joined by the newest leader of the Bullet Club, David Finley. Now, this match was went all chaotic in every aspect. But since the Rascals has shown a new side of them where they need to cut corners, they low blowed, of course, Chris Bay in order to retain the titles. I'm not sure how Finley would take it, but... Apparently, it retained with the Rascals. All right. Now, our next match, according to what commentators are saying, this has only been 10 years of the making between these two. First time ever they actually confront each other. Jake Christ versus... John Moxley. Now we know these two guys have bumped in, in each other from time to time in the backstage area, but they never had a one on one match. Now you know this match was going to be insane in every aspect possible. But much like like Blackpool Combat Club, we've seen their aggressive nights. They love the fight, they like to throw down. Moxley did exactly what he was supposed to do until he applied a chokehold onto Jay Chris in order to pick up the win. Now, our main event is called a Dream Death Match. Masha Slamovich versus Sammy Callum. Now, it was Masha who initiated this match to take place. And Sammy, without hesitation, uh, did it. But you can tell in this type of match, 
Masha had a lot of balls to get in the face of Sammy Callan. But Sammy Callan, you know how dangerous it can be. He did put her away with the Cactus Driver in 97, allowing himself to win. However, when things were, were calming down and Sammy was going to give Masha some respect, they were viciously attacked by none other than those bastards, the unit, Ali and JT Dunn. Basically Dunn, who is sick and tired of Sammy, not getting the message. He wants Callahan in a match against him. Because recent times, we know Callahan, doesn't li Callahan does not like JT Dunn and all this and that. So, I don't know when that would happen. But he used this as an expense to propose to Ali Catch. And of course, Ali Catch said yes. But I wouldn't be surprised if Callahan decides to crash the party one way or the other. So, we'll see what happens until then. But right now, we end things right here with Wrestling Revolver. And move on with none other with Impact Wrestling. Okay, Impact Wrestling opened up with Masha Slamovich versus Killer Kelly. Now, this match was set by Killer Kelly. said she was looking for a new playmate. So this was a very curious and interesting matchup, you know, because I, I don't know. Because we, we've we seen these two women, how they are individually. But one thing that astonished me is, you know, Killer Kelly had Masha Slamovich in the Killer Clutch. But somehow was able to overturn it into a pinfall, allowing her to win. But however, while that the bell already rung with declaring Masha as the winner, Killer Kelly refuses to let go. Continued on, continued on to try to choke her out. However, Ref tried everything in his power to convince her to let it go, which he did. Now, I wouldn't be surprised that we could see a very interesting feud between these two. Now... As you know, Kenny King has his sort of like, not issues or anything. You call it like, who in the hell does, does Nick Aldis think he is kind of attitude? Basically, as you know, when Nick Aldis first arrived, he in fact um, tried to um, tell him who is, who does he really think he is? You know, coming to Impact Wrestling, declaring that, oh, he has a sight set on the Impact World title. So that sort of thing. So he's trying to convince Sheldon, Jean, uh, Jean or John or whatever he calls himself to um, to be ready for his match against Nick Aldis. Now I don't know what he was trying to do, but he obviously thinks that he has confidence enough to put down Nick Aldis. Now as soon as it was that over, we see Trinity Fatu, who said she has an open contract for her match at Under Siege. That is still unclear who could that be. And then all of a sudden, Jai Vidal shows up, takes a quick selfie with her. Now, on to our next match before it starts. Kenny King shows up, heads to the commentary booth with Tom and uh, Matthew Renroll. However, we see Nick Aldis versus Sh uh, Sheldon uh, Jean. You know that Nick Aldis is not an idiot. He knows that Kenny King is right there trying to get into his head or try to get his attention. But however, the National Treasure put everything right in front of him to put Sheldon away with the Texas Cloverleaf, sending a clear message. Now, it's still unclear if we're going to see those two clash down there because, as you know, Kenny King will not permit someone like all this comes in, try to reclaim things that is not rightfully his yet. Now, for a while, we still determine who could be the person attacking um, Santino Morales. So, Joe Hendry thought could it be, of course, um, Johnny Swinger and Zicky Dice? The reason behind that is because Johnny Swinger, uh, his match that he supposed to won against the Nerico, which was, of course, Zicky Dice, was reversed. So it could be revenge, but uh, Johnny Swinger doesn't think, but doesn't say he has nothing to do with it. So Dirty Dangle puts himself in the match. He calls Santino Morella, asking him if it's okay to have this match. Even though he's supposed to be home resting. But, of course, the match did was set. Now, our next match, we have Decay, Crazy Steve, and Black Taurus taking on the Good Hands. John Schuyler and uh, Jason Hotch. Now, for some odd reason, we see Brian Myers shows up. Now, we know Myers had his issues towards uh, Decay in the past. But he decides to give them a helping hand, costing 
uh, decay the match, giving uh, Sk uh, John uh, Skyler to pick up a pinfall onto Black Tarus. However, later on, Moose was questioning Myers' motives. What in the hell are you doing? So he's declaring them the future tag uh, champion. So basically, it's more like, okay. But Moose is the kind of guy who likes to say, say, stay, uh, keep your priorities straight. Now, it's still unclear what is Myers trying to do. The last thing he had is a group called themselves the Learning Tree, which didn't go so well for him. Now, Macklin, as you know, was not a happy camper when things went sideways in that tr uh, trios match when he teamed up with Shira and Singh. However, uh, Macklin said he was done with him, with them for what they've cost, but Shira and S well, Singh had other plans. He said that he may have a way to stay on his good grace, and that good grace turned out to be they attacked Heath, Le uh, Heath out of nowhere. And then Rhino, who has a match against John Macklin, against Steve Macklin, had it to proceed because it was a world it was for the world title however Macklin as you know a straight up killer took him out completely with the KIA but however in the end of the match he decided to put down Rhino one way or the other but as soon as things were getting out of hand Rhino was taken to the ambulance Steve Macklin who goes on a paranoid frenzy saying that all oh, that Rhino came out that um what's his name Scott Demore sent him to take him out uh, Steve Macklin, who's been paranoid through war, goes out, but out of nowhere, here comes PCO. But prior before PCO shows up, uh, for the under siege match between for the world title, the more said that it's going to be a no DQ match. So that's going to be interesting. Now, Dirty Dango has an interesting match against Johnny Swinger. That match was pretty good. It was really funny until Dirty Dango applied the the Falcon Arrow giving him the win. Now, as you know, we saw the design with those weirdo yellow hoodie guys showed up out of nowhere. We see them again. As you know, they're sending a direct message to Callahan. But however, Callahan was not alone. He asked Rich Swan. They attacked the entirety of those of those dudes out of blue. I don't think uh, Diener saw that one coming a mile away. But it became clear. Now Swan, who said that you know, that Sammy said he needed help, he decided to do it. Now our main event is the Knockouts World Tag Team Titles. We have Team Number One, Deanna Prazo and Jordan Grace, which they will face each other for the Knockouts World Title at Under Siege. However, they are facing against the Coven, uh, Kylie King, and T uh, Taylor Wilde. But as always, we see things that could go down. Because we saw that there was miscommunications between Grace and Perrazzo. But it did give the Coven the chance to pick up the win. And once again, they decided to beat down Grace out of the blue. But luckily for her, Trinity shows up. Give them an ass whooping they will never forget. I wouldn't be surprised the Coven will target Trinity when that day comes. However, there's still no indication who will be her opponent for the open contract uh, match at Under Siege just yet. And I think that's pretty much it with Impact Wrestling. I believe we move on to our last final review, and that is Ring of Honor. Okay. ROH, our last review. So let's go with the opening match. This one could have been a main event match because it was awesome. Shane Taylor versus Look for the Sky Boy. Mark Briscoe. Now, this was a very interesting match. Now, one thing that really caught my attention, we often talk about Jay Briscoe, you know, long, may him rest in peace, but was he able to put Shane Taylor in a J drill? That's the obvious question. I don't think he did, but the obvious thing was, could Mark do it? I have to say he had the balls to pull it off. Even though he knew that, that he's facing a much bigger opponent. And which he did. And he won the match. But we will pay attention to what's going to happen with Mark Briscoe. As you know, it's been foretold at the AEW. That Mark Briscoe will be the special guest referee at, in, um, in Double Nothing for the AEW World Tag Team title. Where the dickwads, uh, Lethal and Jared, are 100% that J Mark Briscoe will do the right thing. Well... We'll see about that until we get there. Now, anyway, our next match, we have Rhett Titus and Tracy Williams taking on the Black Bull Combat Club, Wheeler Yuta, and 
Claudia Castanoli. Now, the obvious million dollar question did remain. Now, as you know, there was a double jeopardy match that took place on Dynamite. Who could be uh, Claudio's tag team partner? It could be anybody, including the B uh, BBC. However, my opinion, I would say it could be Willard Yuta because he is a capable tag team partner for Claudio for months. So it was a pretty good match until um, they applied the rocket onto Williams, giving Willard Yuta to pick up the win, and boom, it was over right from there. Now our next match is a title match, the world television title between Blake Christian and Samoa Joe. Now you know Joe will do everything he can to kill Blake Christian. Of course, people would say Blake Christian, Joe is gonna kill you. Well, he did have the guts to stand up against him, but however, he was able to escape the ghetto clutch, but unfortunately he could not escape the muscle buster that put him down once and for all, allowing for Samoa Joe to pick up the win. Now, during an interview, those measly morons, the varsity athletes, and the trust busters are blaming the righteous and dark order with this mishap that happened a week ago. Like, they think it's affected them. It didn't affect them. It affected the kingdom because they had no clue what was going on. So they set themselves up in a eight-man tag match later on. However, speaking of the Righteous, they were in a, in a match next against the Infantry, Carly Bravo, and um, uh, the Captain Sean Dean. However, during the match, Stu Grayson was right there watching. So basically, we know what was going on. So basically, the, the, the real ni uh, initiate what's been happening is that they telling him that you come back when the Dark Order moved on without you. They are saying that they are family, that they are meant to be together in the same group. After they defeated uh, the infantry with the Autumn Sunshine, so the obvious thing is, will Stu Grayson accept the offer or will he just walk away? That's the million dollar question that we will see. Now our next question, next match we have is Robin Renegade along with their sister Charlotte. She take on Vert Vixen and this is Vert Vixen's debut match in Ring of Honor. However, as we've seen, Robin or Charlotte, they have been killing it in Ring of Honor recently. they also been making very impressionable moments. However, it was Robin Renegade with a submission that put away Vert Vixen. She couldn't tap, but she had to tell the ref that she is out. That's pretty much, she had no other choice but to do that. However, in the backstage, we did see an interview with Dasha Gonzalez talking to the mogul embassy apparently someone attacked a trent of the boys dalton castle knows it had to be him and prince nana who is the most despicable individual on the planet had something to do with it they claim they didn't but we all know they did he is a real sicko now this was a very interesting match we definitely got to talk about we have ninja mac versus willie mac both of them with Max. People are saying Mac. I'm like, uh, which one? You got Ninja or Willie? But nonetheless, the match was amazing. I think this was a, a really good one for me to enjoy. But unfortunately, Willie Mac was the one who picked up the win when he caught Willie Mac, uh, Ninja Mac, and then of course put him in a sitting down power bomb, and it was done right from there. Next up, we got the Embassy uh, with. Uh, Cage, um, Leona, and Khan, they take on uh, Ad Adam Priest, Lucky Ali, and Victor Benjamin. This match ended, of course, with the Embassy winning the whole thing. Next up, we have Tony Deppin versus Kyle Fletcher. I have to say, this was a very impressive match. Now, obviously, it, it was going to be Kyle Fletcher to walk away with the win. However, it was very hard hitting for Kyle Fle like Tony Deppin. Now we can say if you guys are big GCW fans, you know Tony Deppin is the biggest a hole on the planet. So you probably think that he will be the toughest individual to withstand a guy like Kyle Fletcher. No, so basically Kyle Fletcher put him away with a pinfall and it was over right from there. But don't forget, he made a target for the AEW international title. I don't know if he's gonna win that one, but it will be an interesting one to see. Now, our next match, we have Anthony Henry 
taking on AR Fox. Another good match, not to mention it was hard hitting for AR Fox because he's very crafty, very sly for what he does in the ring. However, he did pick up the win with the 450. However, there was a beatdown on him by both not only Shane Taylor, but also with the workhorseman, Henry and Trick. But all of a sudden, we saw the a sudden appearance of the former ROH Tag Team Champions. We're talking about FTR. It went really insane. Now, Anthony Henry tried to run, but unfortunately, he was cut off by none other than, than Eddie Kingston. Now, those who did not see this on the Honor Club, what really happened? Uh, it was pretty clear that, of course, Eddie Kingston came to give an update about his injury, that he will be having an in hernia surgery. So that's what I've been hearing. But fortunately, uh, it was a successful surgery. This happened right after the pre-tape. So uh, good for him. Hopefully he recovers soon. Now, our next match, we had the Trust Buster, Sonny Kiss. Slim J and Jeeves K along with varsity athletes uh, Josh Woods taking on the Dark Order. Now at first we did not see Grayson where he was, but some things are very, very interesting. There was a moment where, of course, Grayson was not the legal guy, so Alex Reynolds had to push him out of the way to tell him that he was the, he was the legal guy. Then all of a sudden he bounced. So the obvious thing is thus tell now, is he going to align himself with the with the righteous? Well, we'll see what happens then. Now our main event, we have the Wim, the ROH Women's Championship, Sky Blue versus Athena. Now Athena, as you know, she always saying that she will not allow a threat to take away what she has built. She's a very disrespectful person when it comes to finish the match. She throws in a little bit of the violence, but Sky Blue threw the violence right back at her. But unfortunately, she, Sky Blue came up short when she applied when Athena applied the crossface, and once it was over, you know what she did. Here we go again. Sooner or later, someone has to will do the same thing to her when she loses that title, the teacher a lesson. So we'll find out who will be that one person that will, in fact, do it. So I think that's pretty much it right now. So I think we just move on to our final thing, which is news updates. <laughs> Okay, so we have some interesting updates. We definitely want some news updates. We definitely got to put out. The first one is coming from Fightful Select on two subjects. One, Becky Lynch. Now, Becky Lynch, as you know, has p recently pitched an idea for WWE to do a stadium show in her homeland of Ireland. Uh, she said that this will be at the, she would like to do it at the RDS Arena, which is the, could have the capacity of 18 thousand five hundred people so that would be good however WWE hasn't initially said if they're planning to do that I mean it would be good for uh, the Irish fan base down there if they will love to attend it so we'll pay attention to that now the second one coming from FIFA select that relates to WWE uh, was confirmed now that Brian Kendrick was brought in to help a bad bunny for, to prepare for his backlash match against Damian Priest so it would make sense to have a guy like him to help him out now, as you know, uh, former NXT superstar Saray, now back to her old name, Sari, has announced for her uh, show the Sariism that takes place on the 16th of May has been sold out. So this is going to be a big success for her. So can't wait to see how this one will play out. Um, interesting developments, as you know, recently coming in AEW, we did see Donda Rosa showed up at Dynamite. However, there was the obvious question that did remain. Was she 100% healed from her injury, from her back injury that we've been hearing about? Uh, this is what he had to say. Um, I posted up here. I heard, I heard, this is what he said. I've heard still when she's training, she's hurting a lot. Her back is not better. They introduced her, so I don't know what role would be. I didn't get in the impression she's ready to return quickly. So it's so basically what is unclear is she's still not 100%. We don't know when she'll be back. So Dave Meltzer does make a good valid point on that level. So we'll see where, where this takes us. 
Now, Spark uh, Yoshi Pure Rosa of America has announced that Viva Van will be appearing for the Ignite West on the 16th. So if you're planning to attend that show in the L.A. area, then you guys are in luck. Um, Wrestling Revolver has announced for the Cage of Horrors match, we will see a t the tag team titles defended. Uh, the Rascals will defend the titles against Second Gear Crew, and this is going to be a monster of a match. Prestige Wrestling has announced for the Black Sunshine event on the 18th of June, we got more City Machine Guns versus the Rascals. Now for our GCW updates for the Mastermind that takes place on the 24th of June, Mike Action Mike Jackson will be uh, appearing, and of course our net our show that will be ma uh, making appearance on the 8th of July, called Cleanup Man, is going to be at Hartford, Connecticut, which is going to be good. Now a final update here. This one I made it. I talked about it last on the last episode of the news updates. As you know, uh, it was revealed that Level Up um, announced that B Boy has no longer associated with the with the with the company. Uh, it's still unclear now. SoCal Uncensored, who is the primary news outlets here in Southern California, uh, been trying to get information of what's going on. According to whoever was spoken to B Boy, they decided not to put this on record. Uh, apparently, they're saying there's like it's some sort of investigation taking place. Uh, B-Boy did stated that there was some sort of discord with the management. Uh, not only he was let go, so was his wife. Uh, those who don't know, he and his wife are the co-owners of Level Up. So it's we don't know exactly what is going on. We know that uh, in pro wrestling, things have changed. Uh, this one dates back all the way to the Speak It Out movement. I know that certain people would like to keep this as a free, healthy environment. Not only for the wrestlers themselves but also to the staff and the fans. So it would make sense, but whatever the case was, I don't know. Hopefully things can be resolved or possibly not. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, as you know, we have um, AEW Rampage and NXT Level Up. But however, we got day one of the best of the Super Juniors by New Japan Pro Wrestling. And, of course, New Blood 8. That's going to be one hell of an event. Can't wait to see it. Now, before I go, I want to show you guys something real cool. So, this is what came in the mail. Jungle Aid. This is this shirt. I got this at Pro Wrestling Tees. This is from, the, from Jungle Kiona. Now, you probably ask yourselves, why did I buy it? Well, if you know this or not, Jungle Kiona will be having surgery on her left knee as you remember back in October of 2020 she injured herself uh, she had two surgeries but apparently from what she says they were all failures so she will have another one um, as you know many fans are helping her out um, she said if you purchase one of these shirts you're helping her out to pay for her medical bills which is good so if you guys are Jungle Kiona fans out there get yourself a shirt and support her that's what you need to do me I did my part it's time for you guys to do yours to show support to Joe Kiona. So I think that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.